Hey, what's up everyone? Mecha here, back with the final edition of the Fire Emblem 12 big tier list review with Dawn Dawn 151. Last time we left off right before tiering Deros. Initially I thought he and Naki were the only ones that were worth really going in depth on, but it turns out that most of the units that I put in the free silver tier are more interesting than I gave him credit for. Anyway, let's get back into it. I'm really looking forward to Deros, because I think uh, I had him at like the, the Berserker tier list that I made. I think I had him too low for your tastes. And I do remember his bases being like pretty good, uh, particularly in HP. You, you mentioned him earlier. Uh, he has Axe rank for being pretty good in Draco Knight, if you want him to, I guess. I I don't remember a significant difference between performances in these two, which is super stupid, because I'm, I'm sure you're about to show me just how big, much better he is. I just remember him not being that great, but like an option. Like, uh, there's another guy that was considering drafting at one point for his Axe rank alone. And then mm -hmm. the speed to double a certain general boss. I, don't, I think Darius is funny. I don't remember how much you used him though, so I'm really curious what you have to say about Darius. I would put him in around. Um, let's see. Well, I wouldn't put him in C minus. I definitely put him in C plus or B at the very least. I guess considering how much we talked about Katarina, I, I could s maybe see him bottom of B, but my, my gut still says C plus right now. But that might be too low. I don't know. Let me know. What do you think? Ah, uh, I love to watch you digging yourself into a logical hole. I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? In before S plus, I just stay silent. I just, I just stay silent while know, you, right? uh, you know, talk about conquest sizeo and stuff like that. Can't see me. Can't see him judging me. I mean, I could just look at Jigen's portrait. It's probably the same thing. Yes, Jigen looks like he's judging you, right? Yes, because uh, he, right. he, like. he is. He is. <laughs> he's judging you for being bad at the game and not using him, or like killing him off in prologue. Anyway, um. So I think the easiest people to compare Daryl's to are Belt and Leiden because they have basically the same join time. Like Daryl's joins midway through chapter twelve, but you don't really want him to be doing much in chapter twelve because, like, he kind of gets dominated by a lot of enemies there. He can maybe like chip a fire dragon or chip a barbarian, but he takes a lot of damage in the process. And honestly, the whole process of recruiting him can also cause him to take a lot of damage depending on how you go about doing it. Oh yeah. So at that point, the map all he does is like he blocks a wyvern maybe from a fort, like a like an ambush spawn. But that's basically it. So he has essentially the same avail availability as the um, as the Sable Order units, right? And then mm -hmm. stat-wise, how does he compare? He has the same base HP as Belf, and Belf is the bulkiest of Wait, the that's three. good. That's good. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he has the same base HP as Belf. He has two higher defense. So he is definitely like the bulkiest unit in the mid-game section in terms of his base stats. Uh, he has the same base speed as Belf, um, but he's notably like slower than Leiden. And he has a base, the same base strength as Belf, uh, which is nine. But he has like axe rank, and Belf has lance rank. The problem with Daros is that he doesn't he doesn't have any lance rank, so he he's actually not that good as a Drake, Draco Knight because like when your stats are bad, having the axe rank doesn't really matter all that much because like what are yeah. you gonna do? Like, yeah, I guess there's no good right. effective weapons for him to use except like the hammer against generals later. Right, but you need like a mega force to be able to one shot them and. Daryls won't double them because the generals in this game are pretty fast. Like, in order to double a general as a Draco Knight in hard two, like the one of the first generals you face is the, the chapter 16 one um, in front of the throne, right? And I remember I needed to have like Rainbow Potion Speed Wings Minerva for that. And Minerva <laughs> is not slow, Minerva has base eight speed. <laughs> what does Daryls so, have again? Like, oh, Daryls has base six. Uh, yeah, okay, he's, he's, a, yeah. he's a tier behind. I expected the difference to be bigger. But yeah, that's pretty slow. Right. So Daryl's is not like his, he's not really doing anything with his axe ring. That's a problem. And and so his his best pathway, like there is one chapter where I used him as a berserker still because he like doubled ballisticians and one out of them the silver axe, which not a whole lot of people can do. But like, you know, if you're gonna use him kind of like mid to long term, he's probably overall better as a sword master if you want to actually try to kill stuff. And then if you want to just like tank stuff and do like random utility stuff, sure you can have him as a Draco Knight, and then he'll just like run around and yeah we don't care about killing we just want to distract enemies and stuff like yeah, yeah. Play, and, and he's like a little bit better for that role because of his his bulk like i, I remember i send him off to like <laughs> kill a thief the warp staff thief with, as a as a oh horseman. yeah i remember that <laughs> yeah horseman, yeah because he was a bit bulkier but also because like he couldn't he couldn't dragon pike like belf or like belf could and he wasn't fast enough like leiden was to double the ice dragons so like by process of elimination that was the best role for him so it was like you know, he couldn't do either the, either the other two things that he needed the other units for. So therefore, like, this was the next best thing that he could do. And he was definitely the best candidate at it. But the fact that he had to go down a couple tiers in terms of 
like what his possible roles were. The fact that he's just not interchangeable with them yeah. is definitely like a point against him. They can do what he can do, but he can't do what they can do. Yeah. So it sounds like a... I mean, you still describe him pretty positively, so I'm still inclined to like say... I would, like, if I had to guess, I would say you want him at the bottom of C plus tier. Yeah, I'd stick him like right above risk, maybe. Yeah. Just so that the, the three units are together. Because I really, yeah. you know, there's not a whole lot of argument for yeah. why they shouldn't be right next to each other. Right next to each other. Now, the good thing is that Daryl's base six feet, he can double uh, Ice Dragons in chapter 13 with the, with the Rainbow Potion. But he's not fast enough to double the ones in chapter 14 unless he's gained speed. But the good part is that because he's so bulky as a Swordmaster, I think he actually survives two hits from an Ice Dragon, whereas like Belf and Lydon do not. Ooh. Neat. I love it when that little point difference makes like a big difference in what you can do with him as strategy. Because that's something that he can do that they cannot. That's like different. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I like that. This is what happens when you play zero percent growth a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's why I thought you make such a good fit for this because you know what these units can do at base, regardless of like how they've turned out. Like a lot of people might have used these units and trained them to a like large extent and have like an idea of how they will perform for them, but only because they used them in a run once. And that kind mm -hmm. of really changed how you because like. That changes so much depending on like how you use them and what tasks you make them do and how many levels they get, how much experience they feed to them. But you just check like, okay, this is what they can do at base or with like one or two rounds of growths. Because like, sure, you can check what they do with Rainbow Potion, but that's the same as checking what they can do with like plus two speed from level ups, right? So you still have like a rough idea of what they can do with investment. I think we discussed Nagi, I think off camera for 0% growth once for like when we were commentating the chapters because we were talking about whether she can one shot the enemy dragons in the chapter that she joins in. I think we came to the conclusion that she, on lower difficulty, she can, but the higher you go, the smaller the chances that she hits those benchmarks. Or rather, um, like, depends on like which dragon you attack, I think. I don't remember the very specifics, but I think you said she could one shot on normal and maybe hard one, and then above it gets very tricky for her. Right. I think on hard two, you start needing like extra strength or chip. Now, the good thing is you can you can do the funny uh, <laughs> drill ground strats with <laughs> Nagi too. Just give her a firestone and like, Go on a winning streak with her and maybe gain a couple points of stats and you're all good <laughs> that sounds really funny you think it's useful though because like if you're if we're assuming hard two for the context is tier list right um you do want to kill dragons like almost asap like if you don't uh how do i put this it's it's really like hard especially the first end game map i find is very intense when you go through it you want like every round of combat like counts and one shotting them seems really good uh, especially because we're not like, talking hard four here, where we're just getting eating attack beforehand, but just killing them without any investment, without any forges, or like the, the dual grounds investment, I guess, but not too much investment beyond that. And you kill them in one hit, and someone else can just move on and kill the next dragon. I don't know, it seems like the kind of unit you want, but at the same time, she doesn't have a lot of movement compared to some other characters, I guess, and she also isn't available a whole lot, and it's like the only thing she does, and if she fails at it somehow, because maybe you can't afford the the, the drill ground her or she can't reach the benchmarks at all uh, then she kind of falls apart mm -hmm. so kind of curious how you feel her because like this is a really hard character to rate I think because of that well intuitively I just put her like next to Michalis either above or below I don't really mm. care like That's it's hard good. to argue which one's better or worse but they have like the same availability similar roles um, with like different drawbacks between them like Michalis has better mobility because he can go into better classes um, but then like every time you fight something he has a chance to just die Whereas Nagi, the thing is that like, <laughs> uh, was like off mind, comments, like, you, could, you could just die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whereas Nagi, like, so here's the thing. Um, one thing I forgot to point out is that on her joining chapter, she actually joins in the like beginning of the map, yeah, so no you press. don't get a chance to drill grounds her there. Oh, wait, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, what what some people do on the higher difficulty, especially in zero percent growth, is that they they longbow chip. A, a dragon because then that dragon can't counter and on hard four they just can't attack you anyway right uh and then Nagin can walk up to them and just kill them and i think on hard four she survives a hit so like she can get hit first and then like kill the dragon in one shot from after that longbow chip which is why longbow chip is a thing in the end game anyway like if, if, it, if that weren't the case and longbow chip kind of doesn't really matter a whole lot i guess unless you're trying to kill stuff the dragon pike with uh Something that doesn't double dragons, like a Draco Knight or a Paladin. I mean, maybe. I'm, sh I'm sure she's not the only character who like struggles to one shot dragons, even with like dragon pikes, because they've got like really high thresholds to hit. I think. Right. I, I think the only, I think the only people that are actually one running dragons are swordmasters and horsemen, if you have the stats for it. But but you really need like the high, the high speed to double them, because like I'm pretty sure like fire dragons have close to 26 speed, so you need a 30 cap 
Um, and then at that point, you don't have the Star Seer anymore because Marth stole it. So he ate it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't have the option to, to to use that either. So you just naturally have to double. Um, beyond that, you're not really one shotting Manakeets at all or dragons at all. So you know, I think Nagi like people have found uses for her. She's not great because her mobility is, is kind of bad. I think one thing that's um, really interesting though is that her uh, resistance is actually quite good with the Dragonstone. And um, she can tank some long range tomes. Wow, that seems pretty cool. Because she get like the huge mm -hmm. res bonus from the Divine Stone, right? I think I still And she has like nine stone. personal res as well, which oh, is uh, nothing to scoff at. It's the highest personal base res in the game. That's neat. And you face like a bunch of meteor in endgame, right? So that could be useful, mm -hmm. I suppose. I mean, she's not going to be high priority compared to other people because of the high res, I assume. But maybe you could. I guess you, you don't, you're already going to run them out, are you? Because like they have a lot of uses. They have like 13 uses or something. It just makes it so that you can position her in places where she can get hit by the meteor and not really care too much about it. I think. Oh yeah, so I guess it's it's less of like less about like baiting the tomes away from other units and more about her own flexibility in that regard. Is that what right. you mean? Yeah. Okay, that makes right. sense. Okay, I'll. I don't know. I'll put her like over Michaelis. I don't really have a big preference on either because I haven't really got the experience to back it up in any way. But you know, mm -hmm. sounds good. That's that's a good comparison, Michaelis. Yeah. Me. And the, the tier of Tiki seems reasonable because Tiki is just like Nagi, except she needs to be trained to get mm -hmm. to the point where she does the same stuff Nagi does. And, um, you know, you can, like, I guess, drill grounds her with the Fire Stone trick, but that's going to cost you a little bit of gold, right? And I would say that the gold difference is really the major difference here. And because Tiki doesn't really have any utility up until the end game anyway, because there's no dragons that you face, except for, like, that one dragon in chapter uh, 20. There's, like, that one Earth dragon there in the part of the map that you never go to anyway, but... Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the, the bottom left, to chapter 20? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fuck that shit. <laughs> not going there. Okay. Um, yeah, happy with that. Okay, so we have this 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 free silver tier over here. I put these here presuming that these units weren't interesting enough to warrant like an entire section of the road. I'm kind of assuming that we can kind of group them, maybe not as one group, but like multiple, and put them in the right place for them. Uh, like I said before, free silver generally just means they're not super interesting to talk about and don't really have any super great qualities about themselves that make them really different from others. But I might be wrong about that. Maybe there's someone who does belong to be tiered in a separate way. But my general feeling is that this kind of type of unit kind of belongs in either D tier or even E tier if they're really bad, like the, the Wolf Guard, for example. Uh, like Violent, for example, I'm tempted to put in E tier. Um, that's my feelings on that group as a whole. Is there anyone here who stands out to you or any, any groups you would make, like the Navarre group that we made? Well, I think they're all kind of different in various ways, right? Like we can we can speed round through these guys if you want to, but I, I don't think I think they're no less interesting than maybe half the units that we have tiered thus far in the interesting tier. Okay, so I guess we can just go through and then. Um, Jake. So he's like est. He's basically <laughs> est if you join earlier. Uh, I <laughs> didn't expect that one. I mean, he is like he has he's a promoted class base, whereas s is like unpromoted, right? But he's still bad. Yes. I guess I guess you're just looking at personal basis in that regard then. So Jake is notable for having um some of like the worst bases in that section of the game, but he has he has actually like crazy high growths. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. And um unfortunately his personal base weapon ranks don't really do him that much favors either, because he starts as a warrior with um like uh C rank bows, C rank axes. So like if you're bad, axes don't really help you all that much. And then if you have 75 base bow weapon EXP, you go to sniper and oh no, you can you can have, you can use B rank bows, I guess. You can just use a silver bow instead of having to use a forged iron. But yeah. like you know, Jake has bigger problems than that. Like he he's slower than Horus, he's slower than Dice, he's frailer than Ho Dice. He's actually bulkier than Horus, but not a whole lot of people are <laughs> are frailer than Horus. But he's like barely bulkier than Horus, right? Uh, he has like three base strength, whereas even like Roger as four, like I, I've always like wanted to play a lower difficulty and just like use Jake and see how well he turns out because because his growths are actually kind of crazy high um, in this game. But like at, at that point in the game, you know, bases are greater than growths, and it takes a long time for him to dig out of his hole. Um, like the compared to Est, he has he starts promoted, so that's good. He has access to promoted classes, and his base weapon ranks really aren't that much of an issue at that point. Uh, he has greater availability, 
And um, but the drawback is that he doesn't get triangle attack to try to help him get better. <laughs> I guess. Don no, no, really just said that phrase. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we're we're in the nether regions of the tier list where these kinds of things are yeah. uh, you know considerations to take into account. Yeah. But like. His, his personal base strength is 50%, his personal base speed is 70%. So there's a bunch of classes that he can go into where he is guaranteed to gain speed every level. Sounds like more like Wolf and Sidgar from Shadow Dragon, honestly, that way. Although he's just like a lot later, obviously. It's kind of funny. So do you think it should be above or below female Chris? Uh, <laughs> Sorry. There's not enough tiers in this list for Jake, really. <laughs> okay, but honestly, though, like, I would like, when I initially saw Jake, I was like, okay, do we put him. I was going to put him like the D tier, roughly, because it's, this is where a lot of these free silvers are. Um, so is that where you would want him to, or do you think it's actually E tier? Because like the S I just put him above. I just put him above S, really, because he's basically just a better S, in my opinion. Okay. The, the thing is that, like, unfortunately, he's his stats are not good enough where you can just use him for some shitter for some like shitter roll and be happy with it. Whereas that's something that like Dolph or Abel or Beck could do. Yeah. You just want to so, like, brag to your friends that you're using this character while still doing the yeah. same things that you're usually doing. Yeah. Yeah. So so Jake is definitely one of those, like, you can invest in him long term, and he's like an okay meme unit, but you can't really use him, you know, off the bat for anything, mm -hmm. uh, like, notable, which is what I think is a D tier unit. But still more tolerable than the Roches and the Rads and the Santos. Yeah. Okay. Because he has potential. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, All right. Works for a speed round. Uh, this guy's called Robert. I'm pretty sure. Robert. <laughs> yes. Um, so the easiest way to describe him is uh, if you look at his base stats and his weapon rings and whatnot and his growths, uh, he's he's Rob he's on um, Beck, but worse, but with like one chapter more av availability. Yeah, because he joins like the between the Ice cha chapter and the Fire Dragon chapter, right? Like they just kind of cut cut up to you like, hey, you want to join you? Right. Yeah. He joins at the start of the Ice Dragon chapter, and Beck joins in the middle of the Ice Dragon chapter. Yeah. When Beck. the hard part's already over. Yeah. And then usually for Beck, I think what you usually do, right, is you talk to Beck with Marth, and then you rescue him over and finish the chapter. So it can be like the tail end of it, right? Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. And, and they have like very similar base stats. Um, the, so notably, uh, Beck actually has like a much higher uh, ranks. Like he has one higher sword rank and one higher bow rank, which again, don't really matter a whole lot but i guess if he reclasses a sword master he actually gets b-ring swords instead of c-ring swords mm -hmm. so that's like kind of one minor thing um they have the same base hp beck is two points of defense bulkier he's one point of speed slower so that actually does make a minor difference in that um mm -hmm. like robert meets the guaranteed doubling cutoff against ice dragons in 14 with rim potion whereas beck is one of those like he doubles most of them but there's a chance he doesn't double uh, the 18 speed ice dragons. This is about Swordmaster, right? Swordmaster, yeah. Yeah. On a hard two. Yeah. But other than that, like, they're, you know, they're kind of the same units, so. All right. Really, it's do you value that one, less than one chapter availability, or do you value generally being a little bit better? Honestly, like, it doesn't matter where you no, put them no. relative to Beck, but they're pretty close. Okay. I'll just do them like this. I'll honor Beck for a Shadow Dragon utility and put him higher, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, Athena is here. I, she's not technically a pre promote. Actually, she has pre promote utility. She has a prologue utility, which I forgot to mention. So it's actually like way more interesting than what I'm giving her credit for right now. Yeah. I was initially like, she just joins like late into the game in a guidance chapter. I'm not going to number because I'm going to be wrong. And then uh, she. It's like, she's technically not a pre promote, but she can promote instantly. You probably have a massive seal lying around at that point, unless you're using like. Belf and Leiden, I guess, that maybe you're just running out. And then I remember her stats being particularly unremarkable. I think she also joins after the base preps of the Guidance chapter, so you can't do anything for her there. She's just forced to be a Myrmidon in that chapter, or like you spend a turn promoting, which seems kind of cringe. And then she doesn't even one out any of the enemies there. She's actually like pretty bad there, as far as I remember. Like gets two shot by everything, maybe even one shot by some enemies. It might be Lunatic, where I'm thinking of. And it just doesn't seem like a great chapter, but she's still useful there because uh, force deployment, so she can like. Reveal ballistas and then let you kill them. Or uh -huh. Reveal other enemies. It's kind of cool. So I guess in that way, she actually has quite a bit of interesting utility I didn't think about initially. And then beyond that, though, I think she's pretty bad. I don't think she has anything super noteworthy in that regard, uh, besides like a bit of sword rank. Uh, but considering the prologue -like utility, I would actually be tempted to put her like maybe not over Reese, but uh, she's not as important as Reese. 
So maybe more like Ogma level utility in the prologue. So maybe more like the C minus seems more appropriate for her. That's, yeah, that's it really point. depends on how much you value her prologue utility versus how much your tiering is based on how useful they are over the rest of the game. Because um, the, the thing with prologue utility is that like you don't have enough units to like use, right? So you're kind of you yeah. kind of have prologue utility just because like you exist. Yeah, that and she's like um, really good for that one chapter in the the Merrick uh, chapter. Oh, she's really good for the whole prologue because she's like one of the only units that actually doubles enemies, right? Yeah. Like she's really good, Sita's really good, and uh, Ogma is um, pretty good as well. Yeah, my, my point was uh, more that like she, she's in the Merrick chapter in particular I was highlighting because that's the point where you really don't have any alternatives. Like I think she's forced deployed or like she's like basically forced deployed, but she had like no alternatives. Whereas when like for example Kane, he's in prologue eight only, and you can deploy other units. Like you could use Est instead, for example, which like you said. It's worse by a good margin, but you're not, it's not super terrible, but you don't really have an alternative for Athena when she's first around. Like, you just don't. The thing is that as a unit, she basically doesn't exist after chapter 13x because uh, her stats are trash. Yes. Like, even for that point in the game, like, even if you're like, oh, she can get, like, five level ups in the prologue, right? Her stats are still trash because uh, her base speed at that point in the game is the lowest of, she's, like, she's several chapters <laughs> she's before and after her. <laughs> yeah, two base speed, right? Like the 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 previous unit who had two base speed was rad. <laughs> That's terrible. She also doesn't have male classes, which I guess makes it even worse. Yeah, it doesn't have male classes. So as a sword master, she doesn't double stuff, right? Like she can't, she can't, she has, she can't even double ice dragons who are not like super fast, who are not considered to be super fast. So uh, she has she has zero um, utility after yeah. thirteen X. Actually, there's no way so, she's, she's better than Ogma, yeah. So, so really, like, it's it's all just like how much are you gonna weigh how great she is in prologue? Because she is really good in prologue, but it's like, you know, we we definitely didn't like weigh prologue extremely highly for a lot of units just because, like, you know, they would be they would be higher, right? Like, you know, risk is really critical to prologue, and completing prologue is critical towards completing the rest of the game because you can't access the rest of the game without finishing prologue, right? But that doesn't make risk S tier. It's, it's the, like the whole Edward problem. Yeah. In, uh, Radiant Dawn. Athena's basically like Edward, except if like Edward actually didn't have any long-term viability. That's why I was thinking of putting her in a similar spot to Reese. But then I look at Ogma and I'm thinking, okay, Ogma is like a little worse in prologue considering availability. And then like they're, I know they're not equal. Like Ogma has a, more, more, a bit more bulk and I think Athena has a bit more speed, but you could see them as comparable in prologue, right? And then, um, but Agma is so much better for the rest of the game that he, I feel like he has to be higher than Athena. So that would put, if, if we assume that Agma is accurate, that would put Athena at the very least below him in like C minus tier, if not D tier. Yeah, and I, I, I'm sure there are variants of Prologue that I also LTC using Gordon instead of Athena. Oh, I'm sure they <laughs> exist because people are degenerate as hell these days. Uh, I mean, just random guess, I guess like bottom of C minus. Just because like, that's where we're piling all the hard to tier units anyway, like the whole sure. long term sure. squad, Go that's ahead. I guess. And like that basically means, like, if we just assume she doesn't exist after that, the free utility chapter she has, the 13 X, that like everything she does at that point is enough to be in C minus, basically. Like the product utility, mm -hmm. and then whatever she, whatever value she has in like revealing ballistas or revealing like random enemies. And that's it. That's yeah. all she does in the whole game. Because she's not a unit you use, like, train, f deploy. <laughs> No, she is just one woman. Yes. By the way, aren't you glad that we split up C tier? <laughs> Very three glad. Rolls now. Uh, it, would be, it would be like three lines, yeah. Yeah. That'd be terrible. Can't have that. Okay, Macellan. This is a character I've actually Big used Mac. in a in a, yeah, good old Mac, <laughs> Big Mac, Bald Mac. This is a character I actually used. Um, I'm pretty sure what I did is I played Hard One and reclass to Sniper. I'm pretty sure, which gives him. I think this is the guy that gets eight bows if you reclass to Sniper, mm -hmm. and then. One shot things with the Parthia, like one shot flyers and just do chip damage. I do remember him being really frail, unfortunately, but it kind of works. We we talked a couple times about like units that have like some bow rank because the sniper and it not having a lot of value because either they end up like they have like 30 base rank, so they don't even have like B bows compared to C bows that you get as base sniper. Um but A rank I feel like is a bit of a different beast because then you use Parthia, which is like way more might. And then also, mm -hmm. like, an actual significant stat bonus. I don't know how that compares to his actual personal bases versus others. Uh, but based on that experience, I feel like he's a little bit better than people who are, like, complete trash. I want to say, like, better than... 
Uh, he does turn a bit later than some of these, but like around this area, roughly, like the the this D tier. But my my instinct is like a little bit higher than this. That's what I think. What do you think? Well, he's definitely better than Dolph. Yeah. Like two ball guys, you know, easily compared next to each other. They <laughs> same base class. They join like one chapter after another, right? But like in terms of their stupid shitty flunky stuff, I think Macellan's, uh First of all, his force stuff in chapter sixteen is more valuable than whatever it is that Dolph could do in 15, because 15, you one turn. 16, uh, if you actually want to, like, recruit um, George? Astro oh, and Astro, Mercurius yeah, in the fastest way possible, like, Macellan can actually bait the sniper, and sometimes he dies, but... You did that, right? So be it. Yes. <laughs> and on hard 2, at least, he survives around. I think on hard 3, he will probably need Rainbow Potion to do that, but... Mm -hmm. um, for speed? Or bulk? For the bulk, because okay. uh, Macellan is so frail. Yeah. He has zero personal base defense, and he has four personal base HP. So by far, actually, the worst in the game. Like he has worse. Um, he has worse base. Sorry, seven personal base HP. But uh, he he actually has worse two at bulk than um than Sheena, because Sheena has four HP and two defense. <laughs> it took me a moment to realize you were talking about her, because I was like, wait, who's that? All oh, right, Sheena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's so terrible, but. You know what, if you're like a sniper though, that bulk is like, it's not completely ignorable because there are enemies that will counter you and enemies you want to counter like that other sniper, but you can play around it a lot more easily, I feel like, when you have the high bow rank, right? Mm -hmm. So, so you know, the, the other thing too is that like, if you're going to value the Parthia access, right, like how much do you actually value it? Because Sheena has Parthia access. Oh, true. And she's an E tier. Hmm. Right, and and really the utility that Dolph and Macellan and Abel whatever offer, uh, Macellan especially is just like whatever free stupid stuff he does in Chapter Sixteen. That's like the only major advantage he has over Sheena. I guess he has Chapter Seventeen that exists because Sheena joins at the very end of it. But it's like one chapter availability and like free flunky stuff compared to. Mm. Um, so maybe they should. Know, so so maybe they should be closer to each other, which means maybe either moving this whole group down to E tier or moving Sheena up, which seems like the easier solution. It seems weird to move Sheena up because her stats are so terrible. But I mean, if her bulk is better than Miss Helen's, then maybe there's an argument for it. It's like I don't know. It, it's like it's, the, the two hit bulk is like one point difference, and actually, it honestly doesn't make a difference because uh, like the same attack would two shot her compared to Miss Helen. Unless General has an odd base personal HP, uh, class HP. I don't think it does. I think all uh, classes in this game have an even personal, like, class oh, base I see what, HP. I see, I see, yeah, yeah. Because, like, I was like, why does odd even matter? But because we're talking two hit bulk, which means, you know, we need an even number of HP. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I yeah. can't explain it, but I see it. Okay, so... So the difference is one chapter of utility and, and Macellan's free BS in chapter 16. So... I would definitely put Macellan like above Abel and Dolph because I think that that's actually more valuable. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely less valuable than whatever Beck or Robert can do, which is actual things in Chapter 14. Um, but then, if you want to reevaluate Sheena, like, you know, maybe Sheena should go above. Uh, I, I don't know because Thomas doesn't get Parthia, but in the harder difficulties, like he does actually take care of the Jaco Knights that swarming from behind in Chapter 17. Even Maybe though he doesn't get Parthia. With like a, a normal bow? Like a forged iron or something? Uh, With silver? I don't know if he one-shots that or not. But like he, he has like a thing that he does in that <laughs> chapter that he's kind of forced <laughs> to do because that's where he starts out, right? Yeah, but I I, I remember I used I didn't really use full, Tomas full-time, but I, I played the hard one run, right? Where I think I had Tomas fight the Draco Knights, but I think he might not have the one-shot potential, which is stupid. Because that means if you if you have a javelin, then he would die. So you need like someone else to set it up for him, which almost removes the entire point. And then um, I think I tried. I think I had <laughs> my hard two Iron Man. I don't know if you remember that one. I uh, I had to play a chapter, and I think I reclassed like I, I lost all my units the previous chapter. They got massacred by reinforcements. So I I think I reclassed like all my units to sniper and had them fight Drake nice that way. And like Thomas was among that group among them. Like it's like let, let's just add a fifth sniper to my team, right? And he was by far the worst one because he couldn't one-shot either on the hard two, I uh -huh. think. So I think he doesn't one-shot with Silver, from my memory. Well, in any case, I'll leave it up to you if you want to reevaluate Sheena, because like the couple of chapters availability difference that might make a, that might still constitute that tier difference between them, um, like Sheena and Ma and uh, Big Mac. 
Yeah, or that, uh, that's the question, isn't it? Because it, it's definitely he's definitely better. It's just by yeah, or it's like, yeah. do you want to put them above the you know definitely growth units, or do you want to keep them where they are above the? Because like there is stuff. Because right now you actually have a demarcation between like the you know the shitter growth units that can actually probably be growth units, and then the shitter growth units that um, probably also just don't really work as growth units unless you're really memeing very hard, like Cord and Mathis. But see. I don't know. We're we're definitely spending a lot of time talking about like shitters right now. Yes, we are. <laughs> this is this. Well, right, so this is our attempt at the speed round. Tier. I hope you're better at speed rounds in draft racing, Don Don, because this is going very slow. There's still five units up to here. Don't know. worry, I don't commentate my draft races yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, what? I'll just leave her where she is. If people in the comments have issues with it. They can raise it up. <laughs> yeah, they can be like, "Oh my god, you totally placed Sheena in the wrong place." I actually think I took Partha into account back when I tiered it here, because I remember, I think Scryza brought it up to me, which is pretty funny. But uh, apparently it didn't impress me back then. Okay, Astrum, I think you mentioned that he had like a lot of bulk to go with, and I think you used him for AI baiting on some like Ballista in the Wolfguard chapter. Not the recruit yes. one, but the one before that. That's all I remember about Astrum. Other than that, he's just a free silver to me. He has the highest based defense until Wolf. I like that you said based. Oh, if I if I accidentally put a D at the end of it, I did not mean that. But he, he has the highest base defense until mm -hmm. Wolf. Okay, but like, uh, and his HP is like not terrible either. Mm -hmm. he, you know, like he has stats similar to Abel and Dolph, um, except better in many respects. Like the problem with Abel and Dolph is that they're not really fast enough to actually do anything positive at that point in the game. So it doesn't really matter that Astrum's slower. But it does matter that Astrum's bulkier because he can do a flunky thing better than they can do it. Mm. That's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> His bases don't look very good to me. But I was just checking, checking on the vacuum. Let me compare him to Abel real quick because I'm, I'm curious how big the differences are. Because Astrum is like, yeah, the base 10 HP and 8 defense you just mentioned. But other than that, it's like 5s and 6s. I guess the 8th rank is pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. I think th these numbers are really hard to like gauge without context. I find it, I'm using that Astrum has so much personal sword rank. I think he has a sword as a hero. That's like the point mm -hmm. of what he has, mm -hmm. which is like, okay, so you can use Mercurius. But I don't know if that does a whole lot for you at that point in the game. Mercurius is pretty bad. Not effective against anything. You have to be at one range. Why don't you do a sword master? He's like 18 speed as a sword master. That's kind of trash. <laughs> it's kind of hot trash. Mm -hmm. It's double anything. So like, I mean, I heard you say basically able level, maybe slightly better, maybe slightly worse, depending on what exactly yeah. you can do. Whatever you want to do. Okay. I'm glad it's you care a lot. Man. I'm glad you care a lot. All right, we, oh, we reached that point. It's your tier list, man. You do it. We're at we're in D E and F tier, man. Like I don't. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> right. Okay, speed round it is. What about Astrem? Uh, I I personally prefer Aaron in this game. I don't know about you. But or not you mean Samson? Samson, Samson. Yeah, there we go. So there we go. <laughs> See, that's how much I care. That's how much I care. That's how much I care. <laughs> Samson. I mean, but I remember when I looked at him last. It's like, okay, cool. Axe rank. Uh, next, because <laughs> like, uh, what, is your, what are his bases like? He, he has bases that are pretty comparable to Astrum's, honestly. Like, he has uh, two higher base speed, two less base defense, and a lot more luck. And that's really the, the difference between it's, the two. It's the same level, even. That's funny. And he's the action. I mean, you said before that if your if your stats kind of suck, then the action doesn't really do a whole lot at that point in the game. Right. Uh, do you have a pull axe in this game that you can, like forge and do shit with? That's the other thing. Uh, really if you're memeing around on higher difficulty, yes. Um, I think there was like one specific. I've seen one specific use of a forged pull axe in chapter uh, nineteen, the one with the wolf guard, because um, the the reason why the forged pull axe is valuable there is because the horsemen there have bows and swords and because enemies prioritize damage in this game over like whether or not they counter if you actually send in a draco knight with a forged pole axe the horsemen will attack you up close and get killed instead of attacking with a bow hmm game big gaming Whereas if you use like a Rider's Bane, then you cancel out the swords, weapon tri uh, sorry, weapon rank bonuses and weapon triangle, I guess. So they would do less damage with a sword than a bow, and then they would default to using a bow. Mm hmm. So you counterattack them. Pretty neat. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. thinking. But you need like a pretty massive forge to one shot them, even with a good unit. So Samson really is not doing that. <laughs> yeah. 
Because I was like, I think if you don't one-shot them there, they just get healed by fortified priests, I think. I think there's a bunch yeah. of fortified bishops. I was thinking like there might be some value to Samson because what you mentioned about Chris earlier is he is like one of the few units who can actually use Axe as well. Um, but that was like the context of the early game, early mid game, whereas at this point in the game, you probably have like Minerva and maybe like a trained Berserker or something that actually has a good Axe rank in addition to all that. So it might not be as valuable anymore, not as much unique utility. So maybe it's just another uh, another able. Well, you level. just need stats. Yeah, you just need stats, and he doesn't have the stats, right? Yeah. Like he he has stats that are comparable to Dolph, and really he kind of deserves to be around there. Okay, we'll put him here then. I mean, maybe better, but maybe like Astrum level. Honestly, who cares? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. All right, violent. Like we put Roche in F tier, so is he the same? Thing? He's slower than Roche. Yeah. He actually has the same base bulk as Edgar, uh, which was surprising to me. Whereas Roche, like the the reason why I put him in F tier was because even though he had the same base speed, he was actually like uh, even frailer than than Sedgar was. Um, but I, I will say that with regards to Violent in my notes, I actually wrote down I don't really care. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Put him here. I mean, I think we said it for Roshi last time. It's like, yeah, you could do funny fortune shit, but he's really gonna be the worst at it on your whole team. I don't really care. LOL. Okay. Medea. LOL. Medea, the free silver unit does start with a silver weapon. She just. <laughs> that starts with no weapons. Just no weapons. The automatic FT. I know. I mean, she's actually like kind of fast though, I think. Like, you used her in 20x to mm -hmm. actually distract enemies, which is kind of good. But can she really can she fight like anything? Or is it just distractions that you can do? Because like, I think you can distract because she has low durability, right? And then like high speed, she doesn't get doubled. Right. I, I think she is usable if you put resources into her. Like I honestly, I have a specific place in mind for her, and that's right below Macalus. But okay, so like that level, like actually, yeah, good-ish. Oh, that's that's fine. I mean, eleven base speed is is usable, right? It means you have twenty-four base speed as a swordmaster. That's pretty solid. Is that enough to double like human enemies at that point? Like in 20x? Like the bur I think what do you face there? Warriors and snipers, right? Yeah, I think if you had like a uh, rainbow potion and speed wings, you might be able to. Because <laughs> <laughs> like the next thing you fight is like the, the Arcane no not Arcane Palace. Uh the Wyverns in the the Valley chapter with where you get Michalis. Mm-hmm. Which is like, do you remember how fast those are? Like 26, 25? Pretty sure I, pretty sure I warp skipped those. Uh, yeah, those that's maps. true. I'm I know cool. I know that there was one enemy. There was one enemy that I had, Michalis, uh, one round, right? To In order to get one of the, um, whatchamacallit, like the, the staff chests in the penultimate chapter. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, Michalis is 15 base speed. I don't remember if he needed a rainbow potion for that or not. 15 plus 13 is 28. I think 28 he doubled with uh, okay, without Rainbow Potion, but nice. I could be misremembering. So Medea is only 4 off from 28. If Michalis didn't need the Rainbow Potion, then um, Speed Wings plus uh, Rainbow Potion would allow Medea to do the same mm. thing, technically, against the human enemy. Mm. And and then with a Rainbow Potion, like her stats would actually be kind of close to Michalis's, except for HP, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like Matt Nagy is still better than what she offers right now, cause, especially because like, Nagi feels like lower resource and pretty... High demandish too, like one shining dragons is pretty good. So oh yeah, definitely lower than Naki for sure, and like comparable to Michalis, but around for basically one chapter before Michalis, because I don't think you can ever get her to do anything in twenty, uh, unless you like rescue staff her, which doesn't seem worth. So uh, she has like, I guess Michalis doesn't do anything in his twenty chapter either. So in that way, I guess she still has technically more availability, but. I don't, know. I don't really care too much. I mean, D, D tier is D tier is they don't do anything unless you really want them to. Yeah, generally. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I feel like it's like different for these and like for the thieves too, because like they have some level of utility for free without too much investments. Like, I think that kind of describes like the bottom half of D a lot. But these are like pretty okayish late game units or utility units in that way. But yeah, you do you do need to make them work though. You need to put work into them to some extent, it's like some level mm -hmm. of investments. I don't know. I'm, I'm, if this is roughly the right spot, I think. Um, Emir joins, honestly, like the same time as Medea, but f seems a lot worse to me. Well, one chapter after, right? Because Medea is 20x. Emir does not have 20x. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. I was about to say, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, 20x, yeah, sure. 
So I guess, I mean, it's just not a knock on him. Like, it doesn't really change his position compared to Medea, except he's, like, he's a bit lower. Um, yeah, I mean, well, so all Ymir can do is longbow stuff, right? Because his, his stats actually are, like, you know, he has really good base HP. He has 20 base HP, and his strength is okay, too. It's, like, 11. Um, but he's slower than Medea, so he definitely is out of the realm possibility of doing anything useful offensively against enemies, aside from longbow chip. Mm -hmm. And um, if you want a longbow chip, like, you know, you could use Wolf, right? You could you could longbow chip with Wolf. Wolf has um same two at bulk as uh, Ymir, actually. Uh, two less strength, two more skill, if that matters at all. Um, and I think his uh, bow rank is higher, although he doesn't get to A rank bows. They're both at B. I guess Wolf is like a few attacks away from A rank bows if he goes to Sniper. But, um, like, functionally, they seem interchangeable. Like, I, I don't really know if two points of damage from uh, from Longbow Chip is really all that significant with regards to the Wolf comparison specifically. Sedgar is actually like um, even two points lower than Wolf in that respect, so maybe Sedgar ought to be even lower than where he is right now, but uh, like, Ymir just seems like a slightly better version of Wolf in the end game, but he doesn't get 20x yeah. <laughs> to like do his funny bulk stuff. I think we've definitely reached the conclusion that he's like should be around where they are and then, like, there's definitely not not a tier difference. Um, mm -hmm. And then, like, you, you talked about like the damage from longbow. I think the only realistic scenario where that would make a difference is if like one of them could set up a kill for Nagi, and the other one couldn't. But I cannot imagine that that is the way it is. And even if it is, there's probably a way to compensate for it. So right, or or it's like set up a kill for a forged dragon pike yeah. user, I guess. Yeah, some other kind of yeah. one shot. But so, I don't know what the exact numbers are going to look like. It's going to be heavily dependent on what your team is at that point, really. So mm -hmm. you know. Like, I didn't look beforehand to be like, oh, if you have a cap strength Draco Knight with an exactly, like, <laughs> 6.5 might Dragon Pike Forge, right? Then Ymir's two extra strength makes a difference. Imagine going up to a blacksmith and be like, hey, can you please forge 6.5 on this? Not 6, not 7, shaken, not stirred, 6.5 exactly, please. And he's like, mm -hmm. what the fuck, that, that's got to be 130,000, 32 gold, please. And he just forges, like, your spear in half. <laughs> it's like a half Dragon Pike. I don't know. Maybe we ought. Maybe we ought to drop Sedgar to like, you know, below Sheena or something. Like that. <laughs> that bad. That bad. I'm just. I'm just like. So he is definitely notably worse than Wolf. Like he can't do the same bulk kind of stuff. And he there's like, you know, he, he honestly doesn't really look that much better than Sedgar aside from having some bow rank. I mean, sorry, Violent aside from having some bow. Rank. <laughs> like fun. he has the same, same base HP, strength. <laughs> he's one speed faster and same base defense yeah i mean it's just the bow rank but i think the bow rank alone made him better it's just like i don't know i'm definitely down dropping a blow shima sure but but like but like you don't need bow rank to longbow chip right <laughs> i guess you don't I, I i guess like if you want to if you want to like silver bow chip in chapter 20 you can do that with sedgar whereas you can't do that with violin okay and that, that doesn't sound like a tutor okay all right put him what was it above violent below violent let's, let's put them let's put them below i mean above all of them uh, above, above, above above the rest of them all of them well damn sethgar really fell down huh from like shadow dragon sheesh <laughs> rip i already had him so low were you happy with yeah, do i thing? care i don't know i don't really care my notes just say i don't really care LL at this point so. <laughs> i know we can tell <laughs> but look look at the bright side we did it we made an fp12 tier list isn't it beautiful Yes. I love it. It's great. Amazing. There's nothing left. There's nothing left in interesting. There's nothing left in free silver. There's nothing left to be done. Mm -hmm. All right. I hope everyone enjoyed the super deep dive into FE12. And uh, we, we tiered the biggest cast in all of Fire Emblem. Hope you're happy with it all. And, uh, you know, maybe you can return for another one with a slightly less, less big cast with a lot less free silver. <laughs> yeah, this was, uh, this was definitely an exercise in... Um, Digging, like, <laughs> digging. For I, things. I, I don't, I don't even know, really. Like, <laughs> if you think about all the things in the world that create productive things, this was like <laughs> the pinnacle of <laughs> those things. Uh, I appreciate it either way. Thanks for joining me, Don Don. All right, goodbye, casuals. Goodbye. <laughs>